Hi, my name is Walid Abdullahi. I'm the director of Ceres, the Cooperative Institute for Research in Environmental Sciences. And with regard to the question, can space do more to support action on climate change? The first part of my answer to that is space has already done plenty. But the second part is, yes, of course, it can do more to support action. Um, as far as what it has done, the space-based perspective has provided foundational knowledge and information. In other words, the data to help us understand climate change and inform action. And it does this in part by uh, allowing us to access otherwise inaccessible places, the Arctic, uh, the middle of the Sahara Desert, the, the Amazon rainforest. Now, we can go to these places, but to observe large-scale behavior really requires satellite observations. Um, the second is the space-based perspective allows us to see the world in ways our eyes can't by using the full part of the electromagnetic spectrum, ultraviolet, microwave radiation, thermal infrared, in addition to visible, we're able to quote unquote see things that our eyes otherwise couldn't. Um, and the third is perspective. You know, the large scale perspective of global processes in the Earth system and the interactions among the elements of the Earth system. So what have space-based observations told us with regard to climate change that have helped us understand the situation? Um, well, I'm just going to give you a few examples that illustrate the points I made before about how we observe from space and what that enables us to do. The first is the shrinking Arctic sea ice cover. We're, we're all aware that over the last several decades, Arctic sea ice has been shrinking substantially. We know this because of satellite observations. If we physically went a few hundred miles above the Earth and look down at the Arctic, we wouldn't see the sea ice. The clouds would be in the way. But because we measure it with microwave wave or at microwave wavelengths, the microwaves penetrate the clouds and we're able to see the ice below and its behavior. And so we can see in the late 70s compared to just last year, substantial losses of Arctic sea ice cover. Another area that's, that's close to home for me is wildfires. Um, again, the satellite observations allow us to see fires on a continental scale, their number, their duration, their intensity, and subsequently the fire damage that's done, uh, the spatial extent of these fires. Looking from space helps us get a sense of of the behavior of these fires and their evolution with time, both evolution within a fire incident, but evolution from year to year as to how much these are growing, how more widespread they're becoming. Another area um, from a, a global perspective standpoint is sea level rise. Uh, using satellites, we've measured sea level rise um, reliably since the early 1990s and what you see here is the spatial distribution of sea level rise so we can estimate global rise but also how it varies from location to location which is dependent on you know where the energy is being absorbed in the ocean where the water and ice that are causing the seas to rise in addition to thermal expansion are coming in from and the satellite perspective by orbiting the Earth repeatedly over and over and over for decades um, tells us the regional characteristics, which makes a huge difference in the implications for coastal regions. A, a few inches, um, a difference of a few inches has tremendous implications for people worldwide. And then this last example is really a great illustration of interaction between components of the Earth's system. Uh, this is the carbon dioxide uptake from vegetation. And what you see is CO2, carbon dioxide, overlaid on uh, the annual vegetation patterns. And you can see as spring arrives in the northern hemisphere, we can watch the CO2 uptake by the vegetation in the northern hemisphere. And as fall comes, we watch the increase in CO2 as there is less vegetation to, to take up that carbon dioxide. So the space-based perspective has already told us much, but it's got a lot to tell us going forward. Now, ultimately, the solutions to the climate change challenge is going to depend on policy and sound decision-making, uh, the choices we make as a society. Um, 
And those policies and those choices need data to be made in an informed way. And that, again, is what the space-based perspective tells us. Um, so what can these observations do in the future? Well, one, we can continue watching the climate change story unfold, whether it be uh, manifested through rising oceans, increased fire, changes in hurricane behavior, um, you know, just plain warming, uh, the implications for vegetation, whatever. The space-based perspective allows us to look at the global scale and understand how that story is unfolding. We can also, through new investments, make new kinds of observations that can help us get at the root of these changes, but also inform the implications of our choices uh, so that we can make our choices better um, or provide information on the implications of our choices. These data improve models. When we observe and understand, we get better at predicting. So taking these data and understanding the processes at work and improving our models accordingly allows us to better predict the future, better understand what we're in for, and better prepare for what's coming and better mitigate the changes that, that will happen. So ultimately, this information through the direct observations or how we inform our models will inform policy, will inform our choices. And the good news is we've got the technology, we've got the scientific expertise and capability. What we need is the investment. And we've been lucky that there have been robust investments uh, for quite some time. But when compared to the implications of the climate change challenge and the costs associated with it, those investments have been comparatively small. Uh, so with increased investments, we'll be able to do more. We'll be able to better position ourselves to meet the challenges that are undoubtedly coming. And I'm going to leave you with a quote, a pretty powerful one in my view, uh, by Socrates from 400 BC. Even then he knew man must rise above the earth to the top of the atmosphere and beyond, for only thus will he fully understand the world in which he lives. It was true then, it was true today, and it'll be true tomorrow. So thank you for your attention, and thank you to the organizers for putting this session together, and to the other members of this session uh, contributing on the panel. I appreciate being a part of it.